morning third grade. Um, just FYI, I can hear that um, at least one of my children has woken up this morning, so if we get interrupted, that's why. They don't know I'm hiding in here right now. <laughs> it's a great place to hide in their playroom if I'm trying to keep away from them. Mm, didn't think that one through, did I? It's just got fairly good lighting. And it's not echoey in here because of the carpet, which is nice. Okay, so today we are on lesson two, how are offspring like their parents? All right, so this is a fun one, but it is a long one. Um, just in case you're wondering ahead of time, at the end of this video, I will want you to respond to number six. That's on page 172 in here. Um, and the questions that you will be required to do inside of your book are numbers three, four, eight, and 11. All right, so three, four, eight, and 11, you only have to answer four questions, plus then respond to the video with the answer for number six. All right? Both alike and different. Why do kittens and cats, why do kittens look like cats and not dogs? Why does a corn seed grow into a corn plant and not a tomato plant? Most young plants and animals grow to look like their parents very similar to you, right? Some plants and animals even look like their parents even when they're young. The young antelope in the picture shares many characteristics with its parents. For example, it has the same shape as its parent. Fur is about the same length too. The young antelope is also different in some ways. For example, its horns are much smaller than its parents' horns. The young antelope's horns will grow larger as it gets older. But even then, its horns may not have the exact same shape or size as its parents, right? So sometimes you might have people say, oh my gosh, you look just like your dad. Oh my gosh, you look just like your mom. But then as you grow up, people will say, oh my gosh, you're looking more like your mom or dad every day, right? And then, so like Delilah, you guys all know her, right? You've seen her. She's cute. I know. People are always telling me, oh, she looks so much like you. But there's little differences that I think she looks like Mr. Wheaton. Now, it's hard to it's hard to describe a baby to, or not describe, but compare a baby girl to um, a very bearded man. But they're in there. I see those little tiny little hints. But again, she's not exactly like me. She's not exactly like him. There's like a weird combination, right? Kind of like mixing colors, right? You mix them up and they look similar, but then you get kind of something new. Anyway, it's not really like that at all. I don't know why I gave that example. Sorry, guys. Okay, inherited characteristics. Young plants and animals called are called offspring. Why do offspring often look like their parents? Many characteristics of plants and animals are inherited. Inherit means to receive from a parent. An inherited characteristic is one that's passed from its parents onto their offspring. An inherited characteristic is also called a trait. So, also similarly, that like personality a lot of times um, is passed down, right? Trait. It's a, um, and it's just it's just the way you are, you know. Like before you're even able to like really learn things, you know. Like you could tell like. Certain babies are really easy going, they're calm, cool, collected, and then other babies are kind of divas, right? They need what they need now, and they are not going to, you know, leave you alone until they get it, right? So, yes, that would be something that they just have in them. Okay, sorry, I digress. An inherited characteristic is also called a trait. Animals inherit traits such as color, the shape of their body parts, Plants inherit traits such as leaf shape, flower color. Traits of an animal or plant are often to help it survive in its environment. Humans also inherit traits. You may have traits such as hair color and eye color from your parents. Can you hear someone screaming in the background being weird? All right, number three. This is one of your questions. This frog's skin color is inherited. How does it help the frog survive? You should be able to give me a pretty good answer for that without me talking about it, right? He's brown. Where does he live? What color is it where he lives? That's your hint. <laughs> Acquired characteristics. Not all characteristics are inherited from parents. 
Suppose a woman has her ears pierced. Her offspring will not be born with pierced ears. Her pierced ears are an acquired characteristic. You acquire or get them during your lifetime. Only characteristics that you are born with can be passed to your offspring. Plants and animals develop acquired characteristics through interactions with their environment. For example, a plant's leaves may turn brown if it gets too much sun. Brown leaves are an acquired characteristic. The plant's offspring will not have brown leaves. And number four, yes, is one of your questions. So it says, look at the tree in the picture, right? One inherited characteristic and one acquired characteristic. So, right, so, oh, that's kind of got, got like a green trunk. That's kind of cool, right? So, and it also says, massive winds have helped cause this tree shape. So that's going to be one, right? The shape is going to be something that is, was it born with that shape? No, it wasn't born with that shape. It got that shape from those crazy winds. But generally, probably like the color of the leaves, the color of the bark, the height of it are probably characteristics that were inherited from the parents, right? Cool stuff. The elephant seal has scars on its body, right? People have scars. Oh, you can't see it. Oh, it's the wrong arm. That's why. <laughs> I was going to say scar. Right? My babies don't have that scar. <laughs> they still have scars. Not that one. All right. Inherited behavior. Ah, uh, behavior. That's a fun one. All right. So how you act. Behaviors are things that animals do. A behavior is an animal... A behavior that an animal is born with and able to do is an instinct. Like babies, what is their, like, main instinct? Cry. Right? Cry and suck. So they can you know, calm down and get their milk and cry because they're not having it, right? Those are two main instincts. Instincts are inherited behaviors. One instinct is an animal's response to hunger. For example, baby birds open their mouth when a parent brings food. Puppies are born knowing how to suck milk, as all mammal babies are. Some animals have an instinct to move or migrate when seasons change. Some fight... Butterflies migrate thousands of miles. They fly to warm places to survive the winter. Other animals, such as bats, have an instinct to hibernate in the winter. When animals hibernate, their body systems slow down. This saves energy. energy. <laughs> the animals don't need as much food to survive. Five. Nope, not going to do number five or number six. All right, so that's they're opening their mouths so they can tell their mama they need to eat. Spiders have an instinct to build webs, right? That's not something they learn because parent, spider parents are not around when their babies are born, right? <clears throat> Learned behaviors. Some animals learn some behaviors from their parents or adults. For example, chimpanzees learn how to use a stick as a tool. They use it, the stick to catch and eat insects. Chimpanzees are not knowing how to use tools. They learn how to do this by watching other chimpanzees. Young chimpanzees also must learn which foods are safe to eat, similar to you, right? Your parent at some point in time has taught you that if you see mold on your food, it's maybe not a good idea to eat it, right? Humans learn many behaviors from parents or other, other adults. Like you're learning all this science stuff from me right now. You learned how to read and do math in school. A parent may have taught you how to tie your shoelaces or eat with a spoon. You were not born knowing how to do these things, right? This girl, which is number eight, this is a question that you have to do. All right, so it says, this girl learned how to brush her teeth. How is this learned behavior different from an instinct? Right, so again, an instinct is something that you're born knowing how to do. Why is brushing your teeth not a learned in, or an instinct? Or sorry. Okay, I skipped number six. This is your response. This is, I want you to video respond to this. It says, dogs have many instincts. Describe a behavior of dogs that you think is an instinct. So what's an instinct? Something that a dog is born knowing how to do. Um, and... Tell me why you think dogs, why is it important for a dog to be born knowing how to do that thing? All right. It's a fun one. I thought it was anyway. Because I like dogs. I'm a dog people. All right. 
Small differences in traits. Offspring often look like their parents. Offspring can also look like each other, like brothers and sisters look alike a lot of times. But they may not look exactly alike. Different animals of the same kind can look and act different. For example, two brown rabbits can have brown offspring. They may also have a white or gray offspring. Differences that can help an animal. Some differences in the way an animal looks or acts can help it survive, help it survive and reproduce. For example, rock pocket mice live in rocky habitats in desert areas. Some habitats have light brown rocks and those and others have black rocks. Mice either have light brown or black fur. Scientists have found that a mouse's color often matches the rocks in its habitat. Why would this be? Owls hunt and eat mice. However, owls cannot see light brown mice on light brown rocks or black mice on black rocks. So now my question that you don't have to respond to if you don't want to, but this is just a, a, a thought, I guess, that I'm having. So I'm wondering, let's say these two mice get together and they choose to live in the brown rock environment. But let's say that they have three babies. Two of them are brown and one of them is black. Is that black baby going to be able to survive in that brown rocky environment or would do you think it would move would it yeah would it go somewhere else or would it just like not survive and die really soon because it gets hunted more easily than the others i don't know that's a question that i don't think any of us know the answer to if any of you do that would be really cool but i don't expect you to because i don't so anyway Differences that can harm an animal. Small differences in traits can harm an animal. Some traits can make it harder for an animal to survive and reproduce. Suppose two light brown mice have an offspring that are... Mice have... Oh gosh, that what's going right into it. I seriously... I wasn't expecting that guy. But some are black, which are more likely to survive in the habitat of light brown rocks. The light bring off the brown offspring will be hard for owls to see. But the black mice are easier to see on the light brown rocks. The black offspring are more likely to be eaten by owls. They're less likely to survive and have offspring of their own. Look at that. That's so weird. I promise I did not fully read this ahead. I skimmed it. I pulled out the questions that I wanted you to answer. That's so weird, you guys. Okay, so this is fun. Owls are most likely to hunt and eat mice they can easily see. Um... And number 11, it says, tell why you think there may be few animals with, or owls with poor eyesight in a habitat. All right. So owls don't get to wear glasses when their eyesight is not great. How is that going to be a bad thing? Like, let's say an owl is born needing glasses. He ain't going to be able to get his food. He's either going to be a really skinny owl or he's going to starve. Right? This is so sad, right? And so number 11 is one of the questions I want you to answer also. And that is it for today. That was a doozy, you guys. That was a long lesson. But we're done. And you did great. All right, I'll see you tomorrow.